Welcome to a course on sequence and series. In this lecture, we are going to see about limit superior and limit inferior. What is it all about? Here, we are going to consider a sequence, okay, which is defined in the set of real numbers. So, this concept is primarily on and is on set of real numbers, right? Here, we have a sequence and uh, what um, like um, okay we may collect all possible subsequential subsequential limits to this right so that kind of subsequential limits we are going to collect and we are going to take the supremum and infimum of these things and we are going to name them something right uh, okay let me tell about it uh, let us say e be the uh, set of subsequential limits Right? So, here, uh, it may be a singleton set or it may be a empty set. It may be a set consisting of finite number of elements. These kind of possibilities are there, right? Here, in order to study this concepts, we are going to collect the subsequential limits in the extended real line. So, what is this extended real line means? Usually, whenever we talk about a real line, we consider from we consider this, right? This means the infinite values. Okay, we cannot say the infinite values, the infinity, sorry. Infinity cannot be included, right? So it is something which is clo uh, going very close to infinity, right? But extended real line means we are including infinity as well. For example, if you consider Sn is equal to n as your sequence, what happens to this limit n tends to infinity Sn is infinity. This is what we are writing, right? Okay. This infinity is not included in the set of real line, whereas it is included in the extended real line. Okay. If you look for the limit of this sequence, okay, limit of the sequence in R, it is empty set. Whereas, if you look for the limit of the sequence in this extended real line, that is infinity. Because infinity is also a member of this extended real line. Okay. In the extended real line, we are going to collect all possible subsequential limits and with the help of it, we are going to define limit superior and limit inferior. Uh, okay. We have to take the supremum of E and infimum of E this we may denote it by s upper star or s lower star this may also be written as limit upper bar limit lower bar of sn of the sequence sn okay what are these these are just notations this is called as uh, limit superior okay this is limit superior and the later one is limit inferior okay now uh, what happens okay let me give you some examples first uh, consider sn is equal to 1 upon n okay we know that it is a convergent sequence right so whenever a sequence is convergent what is your collection of subsequential limits it is same as that of the limit of this sequence that is going to be 0 so supremum of E and infimum of E okay, that is S upper star as well as S lower star is 0 for convergent sequences the limit of the sequence is going to be limit superior and limit inferior okay. now uh, let me take Sn is equal to minus 1 up par n. Right? So, here what is the possibility? This can be either minus 1 or 1. Right? So, here uh, your S upper star is the supremum of this set. That is 1. And S lower star is infimum. Okay? Uh, if you consider
this sequence. Right? Here, remember we have to look at the possible limits in the extended real line. Okay, what are the possibilities? It can be 1, 2 and infinity. Right? What is S upper star? It is infinity and S lower star is 1. Suppose in the place of uh, n, if you have some finite value, uh, let, let us take 4. Okay, Then your E is going to be what? 1, 2 and 4 and your S upper star is 4 and S lower star is 1. Okay, If you are going to define Right. Uh, <coughs> as of now, if we have to discuss these limit superior and limit inferior without these things, okay, uh, that is without the concept of subsequential limits and convergence, all those things, just take a plain sequence, right? Try to find out the limit limit point of sorry limits of those sequences, okay? Then see what is going to happen, right? What do, what do we mean by a limit point of a set? In the neighborhood, many points of the set has to be there. Right? Just make use of that idea. Okay. Let me define uh, what? 1, if n is in 5, is it? Mm, 2, if n is in 5, is it? Plus 1, 3, if n is in 5 is it <coughs> 4 otherwise right so here what can be the range of the sequence the range is going to be we we'll start with 1 right so 2 3 4 4 1 2 3 4 4 1 and it goes this way right take any point from this set. Okay. Here I am not going to collect it in a distinct manner. I am just going to take these sets as it is because this is my S1, this is my S2, this is my S3, this is my S4, this is my S5 and it goes this way. Right? I am choosing some point in it that is 1. Okay. In this one I am going to fix any possible positive radius. Okay, this is going to collect points uh, in this range. If I name this range as simply R, okay, this is not scripted, this is simply R. Okay, some points in R such that this is a real line, right? So 1 minus those points has to be less than my epsilon. So if supposing this is the one that I choose, okay. In the neighborhood, my S5, S10, S15, S20, all these points are going to be present in my neighborhood. Right? And of course, the set, the collection of points inside this neighborhood is infinite. When we collect only the distinct sets, it is going to distinct elements, it is going to be finite. Whereas when you plainly look at it, it is infinite. Hence, one is a limit point of the range. Similarly, all the entries here, that is 2, 3, 4 and 1, these 4 points are limit points of this range. So, I have collected the limit points of this set. Now, I will have to look at the supremum and infimum of these sets. Okay, That is, my limit upper bar of this SN, this sequence SN is 4. Okay, Limit lower bar of this Sn is equal to 1. Right? Similarly, uh, <coughs> if I can't, okay, uh, this is the problem, right? Yeah. Plus mm. Okay, let that be. Okay, here, uh, okay, let me take only 5 upon 3 just for the convenience, just to illustrate the concept in ACMA. Okay, here what is going to be the range? Range is going to be 5, 5 upon 2 cube, 5 upon uh, 3 cube, 5 upon 
3 cube and it goes this way. Right? Okay, what can be the limit point? For all possible radius, the limit point must contain at least one point other than this point. So here, only in the neighborhood of 0, I will have few other points. Right? This means what? My E is going to consist of only one element. Here what is happening? My limit lower bar of Sn and my limit upper bar of Sn is 0. Whenever we have this thing, the sequence is convergent one. Right? And uh, along with this, uh, I may give you one, uh, one more property. That is, if you have a sequence, two sequences, Sn smaller than or equals Tn for uh, some n bigger than or equals n. After a certain stage, this is going to be true. If you have this way, then your limit upper bar Sn is smaller than or equals limit upper bar Tn. Similarly, your limit lower bar Sn is smaller than or equals limit lower bar Tn. Okay. Here I have defined with the help of this S star, S upper star and S lower star. Here I am writing these things. These are some notations. Okay. Some authors follow this notation and some authors follow this notation. Some may also have written this S star as uh, limit n approaches infinity supremum of Sn. Okay. This is limit n approaches infinity infimum of Sn they have written as S lower star. Now, we will see a theorem based on these things. The theorem tells you if Sn is a sequence of real numbers. Okay. Here we are talking for the sequence of real numbers. Right. So, this has to be noted. And in the sequence, we are taking the subsequential limits. Right. What do we mean by a subsequential limit? The possible limit points of the subsequences, right? That also we have seen in one of our previous lectures. We have to take all possible subsequences from the given sequence and we have to look for the limit of those sequences, right? Whether it converge or not, okay? We have to collect the limit points, right? We will say a sequence is convergent only if the limit point is a finite and unique, right? We have to collect all such limit points and that is what we are putting inside the set E and we are defining the supremum of E to be A star. Okay. That definition we have just seen now. Okay. Now we have to prove this S upper star. Right. This upper star has the following properties. What are those properties? First property is it is a member of the subsequential limits. Right. The supremum is also going to be one of the subsequential limit of that given sequence. And in the second part, we are going to prove if we identify some element which is bigger than this supremum of E, then we can identify some integer n with this property. That is n bigger than or equals n implies Sn smaller than x. Okay. And Along with this, we have to prove yes, upper star is the only element with these two properties. Okay. Let us see the proof. First of all, uh, we are looking for the possibilities of S star. Okay. Since Sn uh, is given to be the set of real numbers, if you find the range of Sn, it is going to be a subset of real number. Right. Okay. Subset of real numbers means minus infinity comma infinity and moreover uh, while defining this s upper star and s lower star uh, we have seen that we are talking these things in the extended real plane sorry real line which means we are including that minus infinity and infinity also okay so this s upper star has three possibilities that is it can be plus infinity or it can be minus infinity or it can be some real value in between. Okay. First, let us see the case when S star is plus infinity, which means what? Your supremum is sir, your supremum is plus infinity, which means your set that is the subsequential limits will be an unbounded above. Okay. 
so it is unbounded above that is not bounded above okay when it is not bounded above you can uh, the sequence the sequence sn itself going to be a divergent sequence right okay so it diverges to infinity and hence you may always find some subsequence which converges to that is which whose limit point is infinity okay that is what we are saying we can always identify some subsequence such that it goes to plus infinity and hence what this is a member of e right now when your s star is some real value which means what your supremum has some finite value which means your set e is going to be bounded above okay when you have a bounded above okay you have the set is bounded above and we have seen in one of your previous lectures that set of all subsequential limits is a closed set right so you have this thing e n e closure must be same this is by the property of a closed closed set next we will have to see whether this s star is a member of e or not when s star is some real quantity right so for which what we are going to do okay since this is a bounded above set and this is the super now you just treat this e as a subset of r okay this e is a subset of r and for that e your s upper star is the supremum and we have seen in one result that whenever we find a supremum of any subset of real line that is going to be present in the closure of that set right here the closure of the set and the set are equal and hence what you have you have that s upper star is a member of e actually what you have by the theorem that s upper star is a member of e closure here e and e closure are same hence you have s upper star is a member of e right next is the case when your s star is minus infinity that is s upper star is minus infinity yes upper star is the supremum of that set and the supremum is minus infinity okay which means e contains only one element and that element is minus infinity okay only then you can have this so there is no subsequential limit but still we'll have to say it is there okay so in this case what is going to happen is that whatever may be the real number that you choose you can always identify something of this form okay and hence your sn your sequence itself convert sequence itself goes to minus infinity only then you can say this right because your e star can contain only one element and that element is minus infinity okay now let in the second part of this theorem uh, it is given that x is bigger than s star which means we are choosing some point which is bigger than the supremum of e right e is what e is the set of subsequential limits of the sequence sn right it is some subset of the real line that's it so it is always possible to choose some element in the real line which is bigger than the supremum of this set okay we are choosing something of that sort then uh, what it is going to be from the definition of this itself we may see that all possible subsequential limits are present in it which means whatever may be the element that you choose which is bigger than the supremum of this e this will uh, all the elements okay maybe few of the elements in a sequence may be uh, equal to this or bigger than this but after a certain stage all the elements has to be smaller than the elements in the sequence has to be smaller than that x that is what we need to prove okay so in order to prove that what we are going to assume is that we are assuming the contradiction so this is the assumption that we made this is true here what we have said uh, there is an integer n such that this implies this which means after a certain stage this is going to happen or in other words for all but finitely right here we are assuming 
for infinitely many values of n this is true okay if what we have chosen for infinitely many values of a x this is true hence there is some number in e which is bigger than this x this means what for infinitely many values of n this is going to be true which means your sn sn are some subsequence of uh, sn converges to some point which may be bigger than or equals this x this is what exactly it means because of this infinitely many values of n so we can always find some y of this sort which is one of the subsequential limit such that this is happening okay here you know forget about this x okay compare other two things that is y bigger than s star y is also a member of e and s upper star is also a member of e and s upper star is taken to be the supremum of that set e but here you are finding some element in e which is bigger than that it is a contradiction to the fact that this is the supremum of e so this cannot be the case hence sn is less than x for all n and n n bigger than or equals n right okay now we have proved the two parts now we'll have to prove S star is the only number with these properties. That is, a certain value which satisfying these two properties is unique. That is what we are going to prove. Suppose, usually in order to prove uniqueness, we go with contrapositive, right? Suppose we have two numbers. Okay, we have named it P and Q. They are satisfying these two conditions. That is, uh, here your P is a member of E and Q is a member of E. right and if you choose any x which is greater than p and this is going to happen and uh, similarly if you choose any x which is uh, bigger than q this is going to happen this is the assumption that we have made just by stating this okay since we have assumed this p and q are two different things right in a real line this may be your p and q even closer you may take but in real line between any two points whatever may be the points that you choose between any two points you can always identify some other points such kind of point we are identifying and we name that as x right now as of now just consider this p less than x okay this p le less than x may also be written as x greater than p hence by the property b you can identify some stage and says that this is happening right so this means what all the subsequence of yes n converges to some value i don't know what that value is let me simply write that as x yes right which is smaller than x okay all the subsequences of sn converge to some value which is smaller than x right but what we have this x is also less than q and this q is also assumed to be the member of e and is satisfying these conditions right which means this q is also a member of e that is what we have assumed but just by looking at this it is trivial that this q cannot be a member of e but this is a contradiction right so this contradiction occurred due to what because of the assumption that we have two numbers satisfying this property so the assumption is wrong hence that is a unique value which is satisfying these two conditions right that is the uh, we have completed this theorem thank you for watching